Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello there, all of my fans for the Hello Self podcast. I am Patricia Leonard, and I am your host. And remember, this is about helping turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So if you haven't listened to it before, my goal and my mission with Hello Self is to help you get your dreams and goals off that Sunday shelf and start living them now. Whether it's with a career, a relationship, a project that you have, that you've dreamed of, writing a book, whatever that is, we're here to help you. Now, I sometimes have guests on and they tell their story in their Hello Self moments. Today, I am continuing in a series that I started some weeks ago called The Law of Attraction and Relationships. And it was an experience in my own life that triggered this idea to do this. And what I'm finding out is there's a lot of people interested in relationships and how we manage them, not that I have an answer, (laughs) that we manage them in this new society we're living in. And the, I guess the things that we have lived under and we're told this is the way relationships happen. So today, this is series eight, um, I'm going to talk again about relationships. Now, I want to bring you up to date on the last one before we start there. We closed the Law of Attraction Series 7 discussing the eight type of love experiences based upon the triangular theory of love by psychologist Robert Sternberg. His triangular theory of love has three components, intimacy, passion, and commitment. He said that each of these components are present, one of them, in law, in all uh, love experiences, at least one. Taking this concept a little bit farther, of triangular theory of love and the idea of love experiences, we decided in that podcast to look at the impact that age may have on the theory and the various love experiences. Not only the intimacy, passion, and commitment, but looking at age. Are we going to throw that out the window in this new generation? Or does it still haunt us as a societal expectation? So this one is titled The Law of Attraction. What does age have to do with it? Could play on the music song, the line of what's love got to do with it? So I just changed it and said, For this podcast, series number eight, what does age have to do with it? That kind of sets the stage for us now moving into, and I've got several notes because there's so much research out there, and I wanted to make sure that I did give some research and just not only opinion. Many would argue, and this is some of the research, for the legal lie. That is, if all parties are consenting age and can fully and actively consent, then there's no problem. Is that true? But much like the equation, this line of thinking doesn't consider the difference in power. 
Legally, an age of consent is a great thing. But emotionally, how can we consent? How we can consent is in some ways contextual, depending on the circumstances at hand. We just can't make a statement that this is the perfect age difference and that age doesn't have anything to do with it. Absolutely, it does. And absolutely, we can say there is no firm age gap that is perfect. We're living in a time where we're living, (laughs) not just following the laws that have been set up for us by our society or by generations before us. We're now looking at the way we live our lives from our own internal perspective, as well as data and as well as what society is doing. And so we, can, we are impacted by all of that. We have to face it. Some of the next views that I'm going to be sharing are coming from an article from the September 2024 Vogue magazine, the article by Tom Rasmussen, easy for me to say, is what is an acceptable age gap in relationships? Is there an acceptable age gap? So we're going to explore a little bit more of that today. Or is it a priority set by the individuals themselves? Interesting, huh? He says that the age gap in relationship debate is one that he said, I've seen divide dinner tables. And yet it has become an accepted aspect of our transitioning society. So it's something that some people get all tied up about. No, this is the right thing to do. And I think if they talked to several people or did some research, and that's what I'm trying to do here is help them think through that, we have to look at maybe the situation. So is there an accepted age or not? Maybe there's a more nuanced or celebratory incarnation of this dynamic recently resurgent. He points this out. Maybe there are some things that are that in our society have changed, and we have dinner different generations coming together now like we've never had before. Let's take some examples. Um, people, and you're probably sitting there thinking of some examples yourself. And I'm going to just highlight a few that came out as I was doing my research. Natalie Portman and Paul Mescal may just be platonic smoking buddies, but if they're not, we're not upset about it. In her upcoming memoir, Consent, Jill Simmett reflects on the beginnings of her relationship with her husband. Jill Simmett met her husband of 45 years. Now, they've been married 45 years. The painter Arnold Meshes, when he was her art teacher, he was 47 and she was 17. The year was 1970, a time when, in the Bohemian California circles, the pair frequented people, prized sexual liberation over what they often viewed as mere propriety. So maybe it was more accepted in a certain community of people, is what they're saying here, And you may agree with that. And maybe California or the coast are more liberal. You may say that to yourself. Oh, yeah, they're more liberal. So naturally, that would be okay with them. But here in the Midwest, oh, no, that doesn't work. Maybe you need to rethink. Even then, her mother 
called Meschus a pervert. And Simmet and Meschus initially hid their relationship from many of their acquaintances and colleagues. So even though they had this relationship, it wasn't okay. They failed. And by their parents, the mother, to get this out in the public. So they did it secret. So I wonder how many others in life, not only about relationships, but live our life in secret so that we're accepted in our society. When can we just start speaking up and realizing that what we feel, not because we're a certain age, and yet somehow this improbable and in contemporary eyes inexcusable bond led to a long and very happy marriage until the death of her husband in 2016. So they had 45 years of marriage. When everybody else in society said that would never work. I think that what I'm learning as I go through this, it's not about the age so much, but we're going to continue to explore as it might be around interests. So let's just see how this starts to play out. And what about one we all know very well, and you know who I'm going to say next, Celine Dion and Renee, her voice coach and manager. Celine's age difference with her late husband, Renee, raised plenty of eyebrows over the years. So people watch and people make judgments, not from, their, from the perspective of somebody else, but from their own judgments. And this is what so much of our society is about. We, we don't explore why someone would live the life they live or why they're different or why we think the way we think. Where did that come from? The couple were married for an impressive 21 years until Renee passed in 2016. They had three children during their relationship. However, their age gap and the circumstances of their relationship would likely stir up a lot of controversy if their, remote, their romance began today. Now, I don't know. That's what the article was talking about. However, I don't know. It might because of the privacy law and the abusive laws that we've got today uh, might say that he was, uh, he was breaking all kinds of rules about age and abuse. Sion, Silan, <laughs> Celine, and Dion had a 26 year age gap. 26 years. They met in 1980 when Dion was 12 years old and Renee was 38. That's when he became her vocal manager, her vocal coach and manager. Renee and Dion began secretly dating when she was 19 and he was 43. Again, because of society, norms and acceptances and biases, their relationship had to be kept secret, or they felt like it did. After six years of dating in secret, they revealed their romance in 1993 and married in 1994. Dion was 26 and Renee was 52. I don't know if it's my age, but that doesn't seem... It depends upon the maturity of the people sometimes, I think. But we're going to investigate more, so stick with me. You're probably sitting there 
creating your own biases about all this, are you? Where does that come from? Celine once revealed in an interview that Renee, the only man that I ever kissed and the only man that I ever loved. Who are we to say what love is for somebody else? But we do. Maybe what is destined, I'm saying this, maybe what is destined by God and the universe just is. Who am I or you or society to judge? Okay, let's move on. Before you throw something at me, let's look at some more. There are more out there, and you're probably going to say, well, these are all celebrities, and these are all people. It's not just celebrities anymore. What's the age difference between Cher and her new fiancé? There's a 40-year gap with her boyfriend, Alexander Edwards. And, and she says it led to some funny moment during communication. She said that she's 77, and she revealed in an interview with Extra in October of 23, sometimes I'm talking to Alexander, and he has no idea what I'm talking about. I have to bring him up to speak. But you know, there are people that are the same age that have communication and they don't know what the other person's talking about. How are you? But what, what, where did it come from? But I think it was funny what she said uh, because, because of their age differences. And yes, and I think it sounds like they just laugh at it. What a way to break through some of these barriers that are so deep in our society. Laugh about it. Let me tell you, I'll bring you up to date, Alexander. Cher said she dates younger men because they ask her out. Older men are afraid of her. That sounds familiar. When asked about her new man, she posted a smiley emoji. She did it, shutting down haters' comments on their 40-year age gap by saying, Bob doesn't know math. Amen, Cher. <laughs> and that wasn't the end of it. Then doubling down on that emotion after posting another mugly shot caption, love is love. Who are we? To, are we to deny ourselves love just because, oh, I really love you, but I can't, we can't be together because society and I'm in a corporate job and they would look down on it or I'm in a community where or are you going to deny yourself love or at least the experience of love? Some things last forever and some don't. However, maybe it's worth, I always use the dance as my song because I could have missed the pain, but I would have missed the dance. Uh, some words from the song, The Dance. But love is love. Now, who is the definer of love? Is it the person that is experiencing that, or is it somebody down the street that says, oh, she thinks she's in love, or a 16-year-old that says, I'm in love with Johnny. Now, I'm not saying that I say everything is, because sometimes we have to sit down and have a conversation. It doesn't mean that we have to put them down or exclude them from our society. 
I'm going to share something with you that I asked a young woman some, one time, and I thought it was very profound. I'll share it. Okay, now we laid out that part of the series on law of attraction today regarding what age has to do with it. So now let's look at the general rule that is supposed to answer the age gap question. Here is the general rule, according to data. Number one, half your age, then add seven to work out if someone is too young for you today. So half your age and then add seven and see what that gives you. And that'll help you see, is someone too young? Oh boy, I even tried that. That was a joke. However, it doesn't impact me. I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it. <laughs> okay, and the skip point is, so half your age and then add seven to see if the person is too young today. Take the next one. The second one is take seven off your age, then double it to work out if someone is too old for you today. So take seven off your age, then double it to see if someone is too old for you. Now that's the general rule that has been thrown out in our society and perhaps given to people when they go through counseling on the front end about thinking about getting married or thinking about pairing up. Or saying, I love this person. And I do agree that love for me, love comes in many aspects for me. Uh, I love the things that I, the behaviors of someone else I see. And that causes me to love them in a special way. I'm not saying I'm going to marry that person. I'm simply saying I love that behavior. And it causes me to be attracted to them. That's what started this whole Law of Attraction podcasting that I'm doing. There's different ways to look at it other than age, but sometimes age, that's what we're looking at right now to see what's the age difference and how does it impact true love. Celine and others have been attracted simply because they had a similar interest in art, in music, and the person became their coach or became their manager or they worked together on a regular basis and over time, that attraction grew to more attraction. And who are we to say that that growth in attraction is really not love? Because we're all out there defining and redefining our lives and the norms that society has thrown at us from childhood. So we're redefining all the time, not only in our own mind, but in our society, in our laws, in our philosophies, in our beliefs. So those are the, that is the general rule. Half your age, then add seven to see if they're too young. Take seven off your age, then double that to see if they're too old for you to date. Tom Ram Rasmussen, who wrote this, uh, a lot of this that I got from going online. And what did I say the magazine was that the article? I got this from, where did I get this? Oh, from the September 24 Vogue magazine. So in there, Tom Rasmussen said, 
seems like a good rule. He was talking about those two rules of half your age and then double the differences. Seems like a good rule, I tell myself now. As someone operating in a community, the gay one, where age gap relationships are not only more acceptable, but the subject of much culture, pornography, and art. So when you look at the different lifestyles, maybe this thing all becomes different, this age issue all becomes different. Because he even said that it seems like a good rule, I tell myself now, as someone operating that a lot of times in those communities there are great uh, gaps in age. I think that's what he's saying. But he says, therein lies the problem with a mathematical equation where love, sex, romance, and in the best of times, numbers cannot always provide the answer. Mm. Desire, attraction, and nourishment are not the same as basic math. So, does age matter, I ask? Professor Carantes wrote this, and I wanted, I liked these different thoughts from different people, and so I wanted to share this with you. He's a professor, and he wrote in, I, I found it online, research, and you can look, K-A-R-A-N-T-Z-A-S. Romantic couples with a large age gap often raise eyebrows. And this is what he's saying because this is where he works in this kind of uh, environment. Studies had found, he says, that partners with more than a 10-year age gap experience social disapproval. So he's giving us some of the norms that people experience out there with age gap with romantic couples. But he says when it comes to our own relationships, both men and women prefer someone their own age, but are open to someone 10 to 15 years, their senior or their junior. So they may prefer someone their own age, but they're open. And that would not have been a few years ago. Oh, there were always exceptions. But it would not have been the norm as much as it is the norm today. In some non-Western countries, the average age gap is much larger than in Western countries. For example, in some African countries, about 30% of unions reflect a large age gap. So it just depends upon our backgrounds, the beliefs in our countries, the acceptances. So I think what we're finding is, we'll see what we're finding. You keep thinking about what you're finding. <laughs> so does age matter, I ask again. And do couples with large age gaps experience poor or better relationship outcomes compared to couples of similar ages? So does that make a difference? Does it give them better relationships and longer marriages or what? What is the, the prognosis of that? How many relationships had a big age gap? Let's look at that. Across Western countries, about 8% of all married heterosexual couples can be classified as having a large age gap, 10 years or more. So that's in Western countries. That's us. 
these generally involve older men partnered with younger women, and you've seen that all the time. About 1% of age gap couples involve an older woman partnered with a younger man. However, I do believe that is changing. I have a friend, and we've talked about this. When she was in her 20s, a, a man 25 years older than her said that he was a, a musician. He was on the road. And he said, I want to marry you. I'm in love with you. And she said, no, you're not. You don't know what love is, but I'm... 25 years younger than you, older than you, excuse me. And he said, I'm in love with you. Do you hear me? So this went on for five years. She kept resisting. No, it's not that at all. It's just infatuation. She was a beautiful, and she still okay. is a beautiful woman. But that wasn't what he was about. He said, that's not it. Yes, you are beautiful, but that's not, the, that's not the reason I'm in love with you. So finally, after five years, she succumbed and they got married. Now, I talked to her earlier this year. It was just a, an email. It was just a, an email blunder that caused us to connect up and said, oh my gosh, I want to talk to you. We haven't talked for ages. And so I asked her, are you guys still married? She said, yes, Patricia. And we're both retired now. And I said, are you still happy? She said, very happy. She said, and I resisted it. She was the older person. She said, I resisted it all the way. I said, what do you guys do? She said, we go for walks, we hold hands, we talk about life. We talk about, are we glad we did it? We talk about things that everybody, maybe even more than what people talk about. There are always reasons, we think, for why we feel love about somebody. He couldn't explain the whole thing. He couldn't. He just says, I know. And he never gave up. So sometimes we try to put a reason behind stuff. And maybe there is no reason. Maybe love is something destined from God. Who knows? Who knows? And maybe we just now met. Our paths didn't cross earlier. But does that mean since they didn't, that love doesn't matter? That's just the, no, that's not love. No, this woman says we love one another, and we still do. She said, I'm even in shock. <laughs> So the general involved, or the general, the age gap involves older men partnered with younger women. About 1% involves older women with younger men. The limited evidence on same-sex couples, however, suggests the prevalent rate are higher. In same-sex, there's a bigger gap is what statistics are showing or limited evidence, but it's more accepted perhaps there because maybe there's not as much stigma in our society about that at this time, about age differences. About 25% of male-male unions and 15% of female-female unions demonstrate a large age gap. So that's a pretty big percent. A quarter of the male-male reunion, or unions and 15% of female. So big age gaps in there. So society hasn't clamped down on them yet and said, these are your rules. 
So uh, maybe they're giving us liberty to find out what love really is. But what these trends tell us is that the majority of the population is likely to partner with someone of similar age. That's the, the basic trend, and the majority of the population does that. This largely has to do, and here we go again, having social circles that generally include peers of similar ages. We run around with people our age, and it scares me. That's going to be the people that we tend to partner up and being attracted to others who are similar. So we're similar age, and we have this, the basic same ideas about society, and five years later, they change. No, I'm just kidding, but some statistics show that at a certain age, we may have had these similar kind of things. So a lot of it is the people that we're around or the society that we're a part of or religious beliefs or family beliefs, social beliefs. Different countries, remember, have different beliefs and guidelines. Similarity entails many things including personality, because we're talking about being in some, the same age groups or similar group. Similarity entails many things, including personality, interests and values, life goals, and stage of life. Some people may be younger because they, and they run around together because they want children. There can be some different kind of things, but it doesn't mean that every couple wants children. Or maybe they've had children at a younger age and they, that's not in, significant in their life right now. And physical traits, age being a marker of physical appearance. So sometimes it's about appearance. As someone gets older, especially for the women, men may not be as attracted to them. And part of the problem may be that women buy into that age group and start acting a certain way. Show who you are. Be alive. Because that's really what people like most about each other is, I would say, oh yeah, some people just might go for the physical body. But remember, that's going to go away. I don't care what you look like right now. Oh, dear, that's life. Yeah, that's what some people say. Sly and I in April, and then comes my... If, but I think, do we get attracted to the wrong things and call that love? I can't answer that for you, and I can't answer it for the world. And I can't answer when someone says I'm in love. I can't say, no, you're not. That's just a, uh, an attraction. It'll go away tomorrow. How do I know? Why doesn't age matter to some? Let's look at that, too, as we're going through this. Why doesn't age matter to some? Although men and women place importance on a partner who is warm and trustworthy, women place more importance on... Guess what? And you already know the answer. The status and resources of their male partner. Can you take care of me? Are you a CEO of a company? And that's where women, whether it, and they may call it love, but I think sometimes we'd have to look at ourselves and say, is that love? I think love and attraction are something that not very many of us know anything about. We think we do. We think we're smart. But when it comes to the real reason, what is it? Why do I love that person? And they, do they have a lot of money? And we already know that money doesn't make people happy. 
And look at all the miserable people in the world, and they've got beautiful homes, drive Ferraris, hang out in the country clubs, and they don't like each other. But the evolutionary explanation is limited in that it doesn't explain why the reverse occurs. An older woman, younger man pairing. Now, why does that happen? So it doesn't sit for everything that maybe the younger man's not even making more. Maybe he is not even settled in his life yet. But there's an attraction. Or why age gaps exist within same-sex couples. Now, why is that? Why is there, what is the evolutionary explanation? That it doesn't matter. A socio-cultural explanation might provide some insight. Let's look at that and see if it does. With more women working in higher positions and being paid more, they no longer have such a reliance on men for resources. And that makes a lot of sense. But was there love at first in the first place? Or does love really mean love is really about where we are in our socioeconomic life? Yeah, it is. So fewer women will prioritize resources when looking for a mate. So they may not be interested in a partner or marrying or being in a relationship with somebody just because they don't have the money or they're not a CEO of a company or Maybe there are other attractions, common interest. Look at Celine and look at some of the others. Cher. Cher doesn't need money. But I think maybe, maybe as we grow older ourselves, and it's what I said earlier, if you think of yourself as old, then you're going to act old. I don't know when I'm ever going to grow. Oh, wait. This gets to be funny at some point. I'm a bit. Um, so fewer women are prioritizing resources. So they're starting to look, why am I interested in this young man? Why am I like the way he talks? I like. I love his music. I love um, the fact that he's out there living his life. And I want to live my life. So there's a lot more than just money and resources. And yes, we all have to make a living, but do we have to be rich to be in love? No. No. I say no. And I say if that's where we're focusing, we better sit down and have a talk. Hello, self-talk. Am I in love or is it? Is the attraction money and resources? As for sale, same-sex couples, there's very little research, and we already knew that. Some suggest a lack of or a reduced pool of suitable age-similar maids may bring about same-sex coupling with large. So maybe there's not as many, the person's age, available. So they start to look then at various ages. Or they start to run around with various ages. And, and I have several friends that are in a same-sex marriage, men and women. And there, there's usually, not always, but there, in many, there have been age gaps. Now, that's not always true, so we can't just say it's this way or it's that way. But I think this makes sense that maybe there's less availability 
And sometimes we're hesitant. They may be hesitant about stepping out there and even identifying how they feel about the same sex in individually, how they feel. Am I really in love with this person or not? I had a friend that was very close that I worked with, and he denied for years his sexual preference because he said, my dad would never have acknowledged that. He said, so I kept it a secret. And then in his 50s, he was married, and he finally decided that I'm going to come be honest with my wife. And they had a talk, and they were both understanding. Yeah, it didn't mean it didn't hurt, but they began to understand each other. And I love both of them for listening to the other person and acknowledging. We may not always agree with somebody, but that doesn't mean that we don't love them as friends, as lovers, as family. Doesn't mean we don't love them. It's a different kind of love. So the reality is, while an age gap may bring about some challenges for couples, so long as couples work on their relationship, age should be no barrier. I took that right out of some of the research that I was looking at. So as long as the age gap, uh, gap brings about challenges for if they talk through those challenges. Just like my friend and his wife did. They talked through it and didn't destroy each other. I hope this triggers some conversations maybe with yourself about how you're feeling about others and what kind of judgment you put out there. And then if you've experienced situations like this yourself of age gap feelings about somebody, are you going to deny yourself? the opportunity to explore or at least talk to the person about it. If you feel an attraction to someone, are you brave enough to go up and talk to them about that? I've experienced this myself, so I'm not just saying this out of the clear blue sky. If I feel the attraction, I have actually gone to the person and said, I don't know where this is coming from, but I am so attracted to you. And if we can have a conversation about it, we can begin to better understand what love is truly about. And maybe throw all the things that we've believed in all of our life out the window or Maybe explore a little more and decide, you know what? Love is love. Like Cher said, love is love. And it does not know mass. Many people assume that age gap couples fare poorly when it comes to relationship outcomes. But some studies find the relationship satisfaction reported by age gap couples is higher. Isn't that interesting? There wouldn't be the jealousy, maybe. There wouldn't be the battle over we got to make, and we got to make sure that society sees us this way. They would become a partner because love does partner. Love is not jealous. Love is not getting even kind of stuff. Love is blood. And the only way we can begin to understand how we love is to have a conversation about it. Now, it doesn't always mean that attraction leads to a relationship. It does not destroy love. I can tell you that for a fact. Just because there's an age gap and you have an attraction for someone does not destroy love. 
Okay, we were talking about some studies find that relationship satisfaction reported by age gap couples is higher. These couples also seem to report greater trust and commitment and lower jealousy. Just what I would say with similar age couples. So maybe the jealousy is not there because they both know that neither one of them fit in society simply because they chose to follow their hearts. Their soul, their hearts. And that not deny themselves what they determine is love. I also found some tips for overcoming the challenge of age gap relationships. And here's a couple that I found. Setting healthy boundaries. Open communication. What we've been talking about. Having a supportive network. So get with people that are all, not always battering you down all the time and saying, oh my God, this is awful, or whispering in the corner about the couple. Find supportive networks. Experiencing personal growth. Talk about your personal growth. And seeking out professional help if it's necessary. But personal growth, allowing yourselves to grow as a couple, to grow the love, and to understand, has our love transitioned? How are we feeling about it now? That would be healthy for any age group. That's like we started out. Intimacy, passion, commitment. And when the passion's gone, they ain't love no more. You know that in our... That, what... Sternberg was talking about without one, it ain't really love. Because real love, he says, incorporates the triangular theory of love. And it includes all of those. Intimacy, passion, and commitment. For me, just for me, I appreciate the data, scientific studies, social issues, and yet, I like the advice given to me by my niece, Sarah. All of that stuff is great, but I got the best answer I have ever received in helping myself understand about love. She was only about 16 or maybe 17, I don't know. She is a young biracial member of our family. And I said, Sarah, who are you going to marry when you decide that you're in love, a Caucasian or a person of color? Listen to what Sarah said. This will make you think. And Pat... I plan to marry the man I fall in love with. What? what a brilliant way to live life, huh? Can you imagine that from a 16 or 17-year-old young lady? I will never forget that moment. And it has impacted my thinking about life and about love. And about age and love. And about resources and love. The brilliance of a young person. And we think we know the answers because we're mature. Oh, we've lived a lot longer than you. Yeah. And... I say to myself, if I ever marry again, my plan is to first have a talk with God, then make my decision with the person I love and who loves me. That is if I ever and hope I want to experience love. I've been married 
but didn't experience love in those two marriages. Part of it was because of the culture I had lived in and the belief system I had. And I felt that I had to marry. It wasn't because I was in love. The person I really loved, we never married. We both loved one another. I don't think that I had given you an answer, and I didn't intend to. Maybe age has nothing to do with love. Cher said love is love. And it doesn't know math. So I want to close like I always do in these podcasts, saying that what I think for the next podcast on relationships and law of attraction What I think I'm going to do, and I've started some research right now, is I want to talk about the love, the the law of attraction regarding relationships in corporate America. I don't know exactly what all it's going to entail at this moment, but do we fall in love with love? Do we fall in love with titles? Do we fall... And, and is it wrong to find love in corporate America? So I'm not sure what all is going to come out of that, but that's my temporary plan is to look at the law of attraction regarding relationships in business in corporate America. I, I'm throwing that out there, and I want, I'm throwing it out with the option that I can change my mind. And they may take on a different subjects other than relationships, too, uh, as I move forward. But I really like these kind of things because it makes me keep my own thinking current and not get lost in the weeds of back then, way back then, or that's the way it's always been. I want to stay current with what's going on today. That's why I like to surround myself with young people. They're very wise. And yet we don't give them the credit for it a lot of times. However, a conversation with the young and the mature, like me, it's good because seeing different perspectives is good for the young person and for the more mature person. I always say, gather a bunch of information and then say hello to yourself. How do I feel? Who am I now? What do I believe regarding relationships? And I always like to close these podcasts with a love quote that I have found online again. And here is one that I think speaks to What's age got to do with it? So a love quote here. Here is one that Jean-Paul Sartre, French philosopher, said, In love, one and one are one. What a beautiful quote, huh? And I think it really speaks to what does age have to do with it? And what's the age gap that's right? In love, one and one are one. Remember that. I think it's beautiful. It helps us to accept that what comes between each other, and they talk about their individual beliefs, it ends up being One and one, mine plus yours, are one. We bring them together in love. And the second one, love is space and time measured with the heart, not age. Marcel Proust, French novelist. 
Love is space and time measured with the heart. So it's not about 10 years, five years, how long we're going. Love is. Love is. Okay. I think we're going to close now. So in closing, this podcast on the law of attraction with regard to what does age have to do with it? Maybe nothing. You decide for yourself. This is Patricia Leonard signing off on this series number eight on the law of attraction about what's got love got to do with it? Uh, what's age got to do with it? Oh, yeah, boy, that's it. What's age got to do with it? Maybe nothing, remember? Thank you for being here. And I hope this caused you to think, to think, and maybe even change your mind about what love is and how we measure it at the various ages of our life, in our lives, and only our measurement, because others may see it different. God bless. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.